some of the words that the Quran uses for those who can discern signs or who can understand signs and one of the the fundamental points that the Quran makes is that there are two types of people there are people who reflect on the signs and then there are people who ignore the signs and they ignore the signs to their own detriment and the, the Quran also gives us a clear picture of the results that happen from people that ignore the signs and those signs relate to both effects in this world and then also effects in the next world so for instance the Quran gives a lot of signs of, of what happens to societies when they're irreligious and begin to deviate uh, from the path that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has given them constantly the Quran is saying travel in the land and look at the people that went before you look at how they built they were more powerful than you were they built better buildings than you built and yet they came to naught because ultimately they began to disbelieve in the signs of Allah and the analogy that the Quran strikes is of the city Allah strikes the similitude of a city or the likeness of a city Kanat Amina, it was safe, Mutma'inna, content and then its provision would come from all over and this was really to the Meccan people, reminding the Meccan people and then the Quran says that فَكَفَرَتْ بِأَنْعُمِ اللَّهِ they began to deny the bounties of Allah in other words they forgot that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala was the mun'im and that's what happens when you ignore the source of blessing and begin to see uh, yourself or your society as being the providers of whatever you've done there's people that see their work as being the reason that they're getting something out so the Quran uses certain words in relation to these two signs the signs being out there and in ourselves that's those are the natural signs and then the signs of the revelation the Quran uses the word aqala afara taqilun which means don't you use your intellects so the aql which is the component that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has given man is there to be able to comprehend so the idea of using your aql and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says that he gave you sama wal basar wal fuad he gave you hearing sight and a heart and the ulama say that the reason that these three are mentioned together is because mawaratul ilm the ways in which knowledge comes in to you are through your sight and sound and there are signs in themselves but it's through the sight and the sound and that's why Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says that there are signs don't you see them in Surah Al-Mulk when Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says that the people in hell say had we only listened and you'll see these two attributes Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says we gave them sight in order that they show gratitude so the idea of showing gratitude through these capacities that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has given you to perceive these. So the aql is rooted in the fu'ad. That's the Quranic view. They have hearts, but they can't perceive with their hearts. The second, the idea of understanding, al-fahm. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala gives the human being the ability to use the intellect to understand meanings and so you have fahm and also you have fiqh in the Quran which is the faqih in, in old Arabic was the one who could discern a pregnant animal in the midst of a herd it was the one that could see something that was not apparent to others and so the faqih has a, a perception that other people don't have and when the Prophet ﷺ said, "Man yuridillahu bihi khayran yufaqihu fi din," that whoever the Allah wants good for, He gives him understanding of the deen. Even though it's come to mean jurisprudence, it really doesn't mean it in that hadith. In that hadith, it means that they're able to comprehend the purpose of the deen. And obviously, the usuli, the real faqih, not the one that knows the ahkam, but the one who knows how to apply Islam in the world.
irrespective of the circumstances. That is the real faqih. And then also tafakkara. Fakkara is a negative word in the Quran. It's only used once with Al-Walid ibn Mughira, fakkara wa qaddara. But tafakkara, which has to do with struggling with thought. In other words, attempting to understand. Uh, fakkara is really to produce thought, whereas tafakkara is to attempt to understand. And Al-Walid ibn Mughira was somebody who, he was thinking about what he could say about the Quran. Is it magic? Is it this? Is it that? And so the tafakkur is reflection. It's the idea of something enters into you and then you begin to attempt to understand what that means. That is what tafakkur is. Whereas fakkara is coming out of you, projecting onto something else. It actually has kind of the opposite meaning. It's you projecting onto something else. Whereas tafakkur is you allowing something to stimulate in you a desire to understand it at its real level. And then also you have tadhakkara, which is recollection, which is very important concept in the Quran because there's an idea in the Quran that human beings really do have an understanding of what this is all about in the innermost. And there's a type of forgetfulness, a ghafla, a heedlessness that's come over human beings because they've come into the world. And so the Quran gives this idea that this is a dhikr. It's actually a reminder of something you already know. وَذِكِّرْ فَإِنَّ ذِكْرَ تَنْفَعَ الْمُؤْمِنِينَ Remind them, because reminders benefit believers. You can only be reminded of something you already know. And so there is this understanding that all of these things that we're being taught, we actually already know them and so it becomes a recollection that we're really recollecting something that the human being has already perceived